All right, now we're going to call the meeting to order. This is the June 4th meeting of the Charter Review Committee. Uh, we are without members uh, Patty Keeley and Molly Fox, and uh, City Solicitor uh, Alan Sewell, who is an ongoing uh, person who uh, advises us, is uh, absent as well. Um, first order of business is to approve the minutes of the May 21st meeting. I can move approval, please. Second. Any uh, discussion, changes, additions? Um, just what I had emailed you about? Yes. Okay. Just wanted to remind you. You told me to remind me. Uh, yes, Annie. But now you have to remind me <laughs> what you told me to remind me. And um, the language for the school committee vacancies. Oh, yes, yes, yes. The, okay. Whether it should be elect or appointed. Yes, we had a lengthy discussion about that. And uh, I was going to consult with, uh, with Bill Dwight. Um, oh. <laughs> oh, that's not good. Uh, it was the uh, the the sentence that the, their consecutive sentences. The city council and school committee shall be elect by the majority vote of those present a person to fill the vacancy from among the voters entitled to vote for the office. Uh, and then the following sentence is: persons appointed to fill a vacancy by the city council and school. The, the question should be, uh, the question is, should that be consistent? Should we use elect or appointed in both cases? And uh, possibly. I mean, this is, this. I mean, um, yeah, I mean, clarity is the goal, right? Yes. And um, I mean, I'm sure we can cobble something together that would, that second sentence that the, you know, the, let's see, uh, the, the person elected by the committee shall. But it is what it started says, right? Yeah. Persons elected to fill a vacancy by the city council and school committee. What what happened? I think, as I recall, part of the vagueness was uh, the term election was could possibly be misconstrued by a larger election as opposed to the special election that's by committee. Okay. So I think just in the interest of being redundant, you could say the. Uh, the person elected by the committee shall dot dot dot. Does that help? Which, which is what? Which is what? Did you change it to elected? Well, the, in the first sentence, the first sentence yeah. you had mm -hmm. voted last time to change it to elect, and then the second sentence you had voted to change it to appoint. Right. So mm -hmm. it should probably be either appoint or should appointed. Be or, yes. Yeah. yeah I, I suppose so. I mean, although. Yes, I mean, we're, we're describing a process thereby a, of an election. The presumptive winner is the is thereby appointed, but also elected in both instances. So whatever the committee feels more comfortable with, I think, the, yeah, the, uh, the concern was apparently in the room was that there was some confusion about what was being, what could be misconstrued. So. I think to err on the side of caution and be just say the election shall, uh, you know, the, the, as Andy says, appointment probably works in both cases as opposed to the same election. That would probably cover it. I think, I think it's a little clear. It makes that distinction. Works for me. Okay. So uh, the minutes then will read the city council and the school committee shall appoint by majority vote to those present. Person to fill the vacancy from among the voters entitled to vote for the office. Persons appointed to fill a vacancy. Okay. Um, I'll move that as a. You have you moved that as an amendment? Or no. I'll, no I'll I, I, I'm suggesting that. All right. I'll move that as an amendment to the minutes. Then. Second. Okay. With that change, are there any additional changes, suggestions? Okay. With that change, then. Those in favor of approving the minutes? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? That's approved. Any 
again for your attention to all of our discussion. Okay. Um, is there anyone in the audience who would like to address us during the public comment period? Yes. If you would, could you, could you mind standing up here and giving your name, please? Yes. My name is Carolyn Tormont, and I live at 3 Montview Avenue. And um, I apologize for not having attended these before, so it's kind of awkward to just come in in the middle of your um, deliberations, and I don't know if there is a point at which you have discussed or are going to discuss citizens' commissions. Um, that is my interest. And I was puzzled when I learned that citizens' commissions in the old charter um, reported to city council and under this current charter, which I guess you can call the new charter, the new old charter, um, citizens' commissions report to the mayor. In fact, a commission that I was on at one time, the language was serves at the pleasure of the mayor. Um, so I don't know if and when you'll be taking that up and as a member of the public, don't get much information. I suppose I should be following the minutes and your agenda. I don't know if the topic of Citizens Commission is something that will come up or has come up, because I haven't been following that closely either. So I wonder if I can get it. I can only speak. I can't get an answer to a question, correct? No, no, we're pretty, we're pretty liberal. Uh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> there are citizens committee. <laughs> but to, to answer your question, um, th this is not something we've discussed at any length. Um, in fact, I don't recall it, it being a topic of any of our discussion. Um, your concern is the, the who Citizens Commissions report to and who appoints their, their members? Is that, is that yeah. your concern? They were they were creatures of the city council before the new current charter. And they now all charter. serve they are now appointed by the mayor and, and, and yeah. I, I don't believe Bill has something to say about that. Yeah, actually both the mayor and the council create their own commissions. In fact, for instance, there is a commission that's about to be established to review the use of pesticides. That's a council commission. The reporting would be to the council in that respect. Uh, we did it for an ad hoc committee, a citizens commission for the review of the downtown economy, for instance. Um, does any, so the council has the authority to establish and create committees and commissions um, that would answer to the council. Okay. The mayor, on the other hand, also has that. Support. There were a set of permanent standing commissions that. Well, the. That aren't pop up. That are the, sort of well, they're not. Them. Yeah, there's ad hoc, and then there's and the council can do that too. It can do ad hoc and can also establish, um, you know, not in, none of them are established into perpetuity. But it's some just become more abundant, or they're not necessarily applicable anymore. In the, in the, in either case. But the fact is that the mayor um, can have a mixed, mixed body commission or citizens committee or commission. I mean, commissions kind of different, the, the terms are different, but essentially groups that do studies or review or advise either the council or the mayor, they're both allowed, they're both established um, by the separate groups and whomever. Now, the mixed bodies, for instance, which also gets a little complicated, for instance, transportation and parking. Um, that has two counselors on it, but that's because it's a holdover from the old um, charter. Uh, so it's a, that has two council appointments and then also has mayoral appointments and department head appointments. So that one's kind of a, a rarer beast. And so, but the fact is they report to both. Bodies. They report to the mayor and they report back to the council. So it's already embedded in the. In, in the but there were commissions that were switched from public works, human rights. Yeah. Public works, public works doesn't exist. That's right. It's, the mayor it's because closed it down. 
Yeah, and public and works was actually in. problematic and I, and it, because it's actually in violation. Mm -hmm. You had essentially a board of public works that's not elected that actually set fees and rates. Mm -hmm. um, that is not abiding by the Massachusetts Constitution. So right now, city council approves and vets the rates for water and sewer. Lynn? Yeah, um, Carolyn, I think what you may be referring to was how they were established. So you were on Human Rights Commission, and that was established previously by city ordinance. And then when this code was adopted, it removed that provision, and then the committees were laid out by the administrative code. And those can only now be altered by a um, amendment to the code presented by the mayor with a public hearing by right. the council. So that could be what you maybe are referring to. I'm not to. understanding that, but it's probably. Yeah. And I guess I'm, I, you know, I, I did come today in response to Bill Newman's column. It struck a chord in me. And um, I had thought that citizens' commissions reporting to the city council were one way to further democracy in the community. And given that it's a strong mayor government, um, the issues he raised, I'm sure you all read them, um, are a matter of deep concern to me. And so I don't know at some point if citizens can maybe we need to do some research, but I feel I'd like more information about citizens commissions that don't report to the mayor and more opportunity for citizen input ongoing. Um, so I guess that's enough. I guess the one other thing is, is it true, is it correct that there is a representative of each ward on this? So who represents Ward 3? Oh, You're hi, right Ellen. Okay. <laughs> so is there any way to get feedback on the Ward 3 thing or something? How do you mean? No, we can tell, I see you. I see, we'll we, but I, the other issue here, I mean, I, I, I feel like you want me to update it's a you? lot of work for a citizen to sort of dig in and get get a hand on what you folks are doing mm -hmm. and what what are the big issues and um, you know I think a what there's a website there's a see there's a ward three email you should send us the website and yeah and we and I can come to one of the ward three meetings okay. and of those and we can I mean actually it's Jim, maybe it's that. Jim's job as our city our, our, City Councilor to, this, yeah. to, to, to <laughs> keep us keep us informed, but we don't hear anything, and I don't know if other wards do too. Yeah. I'll just add that on the website, which we can get you the link. There's a Google Doc, and we've been recording all of our recommended changes, and I'm, I put them in red, and then at the bottom of it, it also has all the topics that we've we've heard from the public, and and, just and I I appreciate of. that, but. It's a little wonky for a lot of people. And I'm not it. criticizing. No, no, no. I totally what I'm get saying that. is, I was happy that Bill wrote the column. Reminds people there's a process going on. Um, it's like a constitutional convention in a way, if you think about it. And I like to see more opportunities for community involvement and to sort of highlight what the may, what what might be significant issues and. I don't know, I'm trying to be polite. Um, a little well, more. We're, we're very thick little, skin, so. <laughs> you know, you're doing your job, but I think, as a former editor, you would understand. I think there's, I'd like to see more sunlight on this so that things don't happen and then, well, what, people say, oh my God, I don't like what happened. Well, where were you? You know, um, I'm not. There was, the, um, you just actually, uh, a really edifying public forum that we held at JFK on election, three election processes that were being proposed to be changed. Or Stems and, and Sam are arranging other forums on the larger. On Who is the, Sam? Oh, is you're Sam. Sam. <laughs> the uh, on larger uh, on the the big issues that that people have brought to us and also that we've noted and. There will be those. Those will be public forums and larger venues where people can come, um, speak a public comment, share, Good. or be part Good. of presentation. And how will we get the news about that? 
Well, we, the way we did it last time was it was posted. It's because it posted as public meetings. It's also, it was shared on Facebook. It was, I mean, short of banging on your door, yeah. <laughs> there's not a lot of options of, of what we can do. And so what Make I would invite you to- the counselor send it out. They have well, you email can, lists I, of you our can, neighborhood. You can send that to your, you can I will refer that to your counselor and yeah. I'm sure he would oblige. I don't think that'd be a problem. Okay. And then you're also, your rep here, you do see on a regular basis. So, yeah, yeah, I work with them at the yeah, library. Exactly. <laughs> so, and I think, I think, but that's just you. Sure. Know, there were other citizens. No, I hear that, and I, I think there should be a public process. In fact, I'll let you go back to business, but I think the fact that this is going on in this town, while what's going on in this country is going on, is the, could be such an educable opportunity for the community to understand how government's supposed to run and checks and balances and all the rest, and you are in the weeds and working on all the details, and I thank you for doing this incredible job, but this is a real public education opportunity. Uh, I, so, I agree, and I, I think that it's not letting us get back to our business. You are part of our business. Hearing from people is part of our business, and we're going, to, we're going to uh, do as much as we possibly can in terms of, of reaching out to people to hear, hear from anyone who wants to I can okay. um, um, fully uh, support your your thought that there ought to be as much sun, sunlight on this as, as possible. So. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Claudia? I don't have to stand up there. Or can okay. I just talk to you from here? Yes, you may talk to us. Okay, right. Since, it, since you're so liberal minded, <laughs> you, you <laughs> <Why'd> responded. <laughs> So, uh, uh, Claudia Lefko, 40 Valley Street. I'm Carolyn's backdoor neighbor, actually. I, I didn't know she was coming. It wasn't a plot to like flood you with Ward 3 people. But, um, I mean, I came a little bit like Carolyn did. I went to the public meeting and I spoke about term limits, you know, and I don't know if that's come up again or, or not, because I haven't gone to the website. You know, I didn't. I, I don't know. I, I, I'm like a little bit like Carolyn that I feel there is not that much news about this. And it's such a huge thing that's going on. And, and, it, and maybe we're lazy because well, I don't do Facebook. And maybe I hear on Facebook. But so there are all these ways I don't on hear Facebook, about it. I don't know. But so I was very impressed with the kids, you know, the, the people who went and, and had formed. Did they form, or I'm curious, did they form a, their own committee to study the question of could 16-year-olds vote? because they seem to know other states or other communities or whatever, and they were very organized. So then I think, well, if I want to talk about term limits to you all, and I don't even know when this process is finished, do I need to like make a committee of people who are interested in the issue of term limits? Or if I just come to you and say, I'm really interested in discussing term limits, do, you know, I hate it myself when I'm on a committee and people come and say, well, why don't you do this? Because then you have more work to do. But so I'm curious about the process of how the, the students, the 16-year-olds, you know, and I think there were teachers with them or something. But so that's why I'm here. And I'm actually willing to do some, uh, if, if you say to me, well, it's your job to come to us with convincing evidence of why to do this, or I don't know exactly how to make the case. So I'm, I'm here just... I'm here because I think it's really important, and, and look, it's just the three of us sitting here while you do your business, and you all, and, and really, people, it's just going to change, it, it matters the way the city is run, you know, and people don't seem to get that this is about how the city is run, so, you know, whatever, so that's why I'm here. Well, Claudia, I appreciate your passion. Um, we, um, I mean, we'd love to have the room filled every um, every other Tuesday when we're here, but... Is it every other Tuesday? First and third. Twice a month. Because I went last, after I went to that meeting, I went to the website, and they didn't have a middle meeting. It said the next meeting, June 4th. You know, and I thought, and then I thought, well, maybe he said, oh, it's every second. Well, it, it's that, only it, the second that Tuesday. That forum that you were at was a special meeting for us. That was right. A, that was the fifth Tuesday of April. But I'm saying I thought you said that you met every other Tuesday. But when I went to the website to find out when the next meeting was, which was now two weeks ago, yeah. it wasn't there. I couldn't find any listing 
I, I went to the city's website, and, and I admit I could have made a mistake, but I was prepared to come two weeks ago, but then I thought, oh, the next meeting, it said June 4th, so I don't know if it was me or the website, but anyway, I, so I'm, I'm sorry to be reactive to that, but, but I'm glad to hear it meets every two weeks, because now I can put it in my mind. Well, except, except during the yeah. right, right. July, First. and Claudia, just so you don't get, don't get upset at us, we, uh, <laughs> You're not going to do it in July. <laughs> well, we're only going to meet once in July. Okay. Right? I'll go and be more careful on the website. Okay. Well, to answer your question, no, you don't need to form a committee to convince us that, that term limits is something that needs further discussion. If you feel passionately about it, then you should you should state your case. And, and um, it's something that, that that has been brought to our attention. And if we hear from more people, and it's something that that there seems to be a, a you know a, 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 a time to look to look at this again in Northampton, then we'll take a look at it. Because are you going through the charter every single thing and looking at every single thing? So then, is it that somebody should come when you're going to look at? No. No, it's not happening like that. Um, we were, we were, I was thinking, is there some way you could, the agenda for meetings is usually on the city website, but do you have an agenda of what topics you're dealing yeah. with on the city website before each well, meeting? Yeah, as Sam said, if you go to the Google Doc that we created, that lists oh, everything that has been uh, brought to our attention. No, but I'm talking about going forward, like sending out, sending out publicity about do you, do you, is there a Facebook page that says um, next meeting and here's the topics that are going to be taken up at that meeting? You ask me, ask me. I mean, part of it is part of what our next our pending agendas um, depend on what comes up during the course of a meeting, for instance. Right. But, so, and so that, that would be subject to change, um, but actually Stan's been pretty assiduous about progressing through the document as we go. But it, as he also pointed out, we're, we're, for instance, you're bringing up topics that in some cases we may have already addressed or not. Right. It, it's fine. It's perfectly fine. We don't, the, the public's not required to um, conform with the agenda. It's, they're, they're, but I'm asking you if I want to. Let's say, is there some way that I can know which things you're going to be dealing with at the next yes, meeting. Yes, yes, yes. The agenda is posted. posted. Yeah, sure. This is, this is the agenda for tonight. And it was on the website. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's not, on, not on Facebook. And not on the city council website. We, we don't have um, a website. The, 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 the city website, yeah. It is on the city website. Yes. Yeah. Oh, that's, fact, that's, that's the website right you're talking about. Website. You're talking yeah. about the city website. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And I know you have to post it a few days ahead. Yes. Yes. Yeah. That okay, is, so that's and, the website and, you're talking and, and about. And actually, frequently, these guys do it way in advance of, of, of the required minimal time for posting. And just a little thing I found out myself. If you're looking at the home page of the city site and you just see the calendar and you only yeah. see four meetings there, and you say, oh, that's it's not happening, it's not here, it only will show four meetings. You have to click View All. Mm -hmm. We're limited to just four slots on the main that's, page. That's not an easy peasy website. Mm -hmm. well, well, we're not here to discuss the city's website. I know. Um, I mean, now I know. <laughs> so I will spread the word. But I would advise, if you can find someone to help you, and I'm sure any of us would offer, you could review the minutes, which are very thorough. And you can hear what's been said up to now. Thank you. On and are those issue, on the website? On your issue. Mm -hmm. On yes. the city website. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank yes, you. and we will print them out for you at the library. No, that's <laughs> enough. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll show you the, the, no. the document, too. No, thank you. I can, no, I'm happy I can to go on the city website. Okay, I don't want to waste duties. your time. Go ahead. I'm, I'm clear now. To answer one of your questions, uh, our work must be done by December 3rd. Oh, this is a one-year appointment. So we better get busy. Claudia, do you want to say more tonight about term limits? <laughs> well, it's 
you know, people are declaring they're going to run again or not run again. Of course, I always, just like with, with Marianne sitting there at the public meeting at JFK, you know, here's Bill, like, how many terms have you, and Mac and I were trying to figure out how many. So, uh, it's, um, I'll be, be my seventh term. Uh, oh, seventh. I served, I served four right, terms from Ward one, one, one. took over Kirby season. Okay. And it took about five years, and this right. will be my third term. So. Maybe I'm inspired by, you know, Alexandria, AOC or something. I mean, it's not like I'm unhappy with city government. I mean, I think the city runs well and stuff. But I feel like there is, to my, I feel there's a dearth of, of new ideas coming out, that the city council is very reactive to some extent, and I attribute this to some, I keep saying to some extent, to the fact that people sit there for a long time, and I sat for three Three, you know, uh, I had three terms on the school committee, so I, I felt like when I was done with those three terms, I wish I'd give somebody else a chance. And if people sit for a long time on a on a city on uh, running the city, I feel like it discourages other people to even think about running because it's very d daunting to think, oh, I'm going to run against Bill Dwight, you know, for the city council at large. Well, like, what are your hopes? I mean, maybe somebody will come forth and do it, but but by knowing that people are going to turn over, I think it encourages everybody to start thinking, ah, well, so this is going to be the end. I don't want to keep using you as an example. Sorry. So, I'm, I'm so uh, Elisa Klein is not going to run again. So already, you, you know, you need to start thinking in Ward 7 of who's going to run. But you don't need to actually wait to hear that she's not running. You know, because then it's sort of like you feel like if you run, quote unquote, run against Elisa, maybe you like what she's done, but you feel like it's time for her to go at any rate. I mean, Having people sit there and for a long, long time, and I, I spoke about this at the other, at the former charter revision one, and um, Bill Ames was in the audience. <laughs> you know, Bill Ames was a longtime city councilor, and he was totally against these term limits because people get experience. But I think experience is what, on some level, Carolyn is sort of talking about. Citizens need experience, like being on committees and being part of the city government. And if we just, all of us, sit back and let the people who, who have the time or whatever, the motivation to do it, then we're lazy people. And I think we become, and I think our voting record, the, the percentage of people who go out and vote in Northampton isn't that great. And in fact, you know, I feel like if we give 16-year-olds the vote, even a less percentage will vote because we'll have all these 16-year-olds, some of which will be motivated, and others which will think, oh my God, like I'm not voting. And so somehow you'll have more people eligible and whatever. So so it's, it's a matter, again, of democracy, I think. It's not like you're unhappy with people, but there's tons of ways people can still do things in the city without being on the city council. And I think one of the things that happens is that, of course, people don't have time. So you get a demographic who, who whatever, they have a spouse that makes enough money, that they have enough time to sit on the city council. I mean, it's like even school committee, I thought of it as a part-time job. I was working like 20 or 30 hours a week at the school committee. You have to have the right life situation. But if we, op if we have uh, term limits and we encourage more people to run, then we have to say, well, what do we people need in order to run? Do what do we need to provide for people? And I know the salary has gone up, which might help for some people to run stuff. But it opens up a whole, a whole vibrant, a whole vibrancy that you don't, you don't get when the city, the city chugs along with the same. I mean, the same mayor, the same city council, the same school committee. You know, it, it. It falls out. It seems to just, I don't know. So that's that's really my issue. It's really a question of of trying to involve more people. And may and this isn't like necessarily the thing that's going to get people more involved or not involved. But it's one aspect, you know, of it. So. Thanks, Claudia. Based on your own experience and your observations, what would be a uh, what would you suggest as a, a reasonable number of Terms. I thought so three terms was three? fine. Yes. Three. Well, at that time, of course, and running at large uh, for school committee, you had to 
you, you, it was a two-year term. The other school committee people were three-year terms, and honestly, I just couldn't do it. I couldn't, couldn't put up a campaign again. But somehow the first, you know, by, the, by, by six years, you know, after the first year, you really have your feet on the ground and stuff. And I feel like three or four terms is really good enough. And you feel, it gives effort. You, you feel satisfied. You did something for the city. You didn't have to dedicate your whole life. You put in some time, and now it's time for somebody else. So, so I'm, I'm really feel like, uh, so this is what I'm doing here. And I don't know, do I need to bring, do, do I need to, in order to, make the case, kind of get a lobbying group of people, or put it out, or do something. I'm not exactly sure how to proceed about this, because because it's not something maybe some people, maybe they're thinking about it, it's election time coming up, or, or maybe, and the charter, the charter's going on, and the election's coming up, and are people saying, maybe we should, you know, get rid of this, whatever, I don't know, so. Right. I'm curious. Can you can you off the top of your head give me examples of of times when you have thought that the city council is reactive to new ideas? No, not. Oh, I, I didn't mean reactive to new ideas. I, they're reactive rather than proactive. You know, I think sometimes. So, for instance, with all this uh, talk going on about um, the Green New Deal, for instance. You know, from, from my point of view, I would like the city council to be saying, well, what are we doing at the local level? What are we, promote, you know, proposing that's like that in Northampton? Like, what are we doing for ourselves here? And I know there are things going on that we're a pretty green city, but it's different than what they're talking about in this, this bigger program. For me personally, you know, when I see we're going to have an override in the city, I mean, I'm saying, oh, we have tons of money. It's going to the wars. And at one point, the women, the, the, when we did Mother's Day marches, and I'm sorry, I'm just totally, I'm screaming at you. When we did Mother's Day marches in Northampton some years ago, one year we decided what we were going to do was approach the city, the mayor, and the city council and ask them to stop sending federal tax money out of the city, to keep the tax money in the city. I know it's a crazy idea. Everybody said, nobody's going to listen to you. But the truth is that money is going somewhere and it's not staying for us and we don't have enough money to do what we need to do in the city. And so we, we, we went and we spoke in front of the city council. I went to try to talk to the mayor about it, and mostly they just was like, oh my God, like you're so crazy to even think this. But these are the kinds of ideas in these times that I feel like we need to be grappling with. And I'm not coming up with that many ideas, but there are people like kids at the high school have ideas. Obviously, you heard from them about the voting age and stuff. So it's that kind of thing. It's not that they're not making good decisions or using money wisely. I have no actual sort of complaints about the way of, about the city, but I do have a complaint about the level of involvement, you know, of, of just general the citizenry and and the idea that and I'll just tell you one other thing, you know, that's really I don't it read kind of crazy is like I'm so I'm very upset about the fact that they've painted that that alleyway over there between the buildings because talk about citizens committees. In our ward we had a traffic calming committee and we tried to get, you know, we wanted to paint crosswalks in our neighborhood. We had money even in, in a in a fund because of some development in the neighborhood. And nobody would let us do it. You know, and now and this was I don't know, 10 years ago. And now everywhere, you know, you've got the rainbow walk in front of Thorns, and you've got that one. Everybody's paint, letting people paint on the sidewalk in town, but out in the wards, in the neighborhoods, you know, people aren't doing it. So maybe it's my city councilors not. But, but I'm just saying that there is this sense that, you know, that's, that's what I'm talking about, this kind of lack of energy, maybe. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. I, didn't, I don't need to come here and just go blathering here. Uh, I, you know, we welcome involvement any, any way that you want to, um, to let people know that we're doing this work this year and that, that, that they are welcome to be heard. We, we 
support it. So. So when so when you have the forums, for instance, yes. uh, would you do one around? Would you would you, for instance, could I work with you to sponsor a meeting where people would talk about term limits? I mean, is that a way to proceed? It, it's possible. I mean, uh, I mean, we haven't decided on the, on the uh, subjects for you know for future forums. We've got you know seven more months now to complete our work. Right. It's possible we could have one that might be around term limits or term limits and other issues, other topics. Right. Okay. All right. I mean, um, I don't want to flood you with, <laughs> I'm not about to go organize a big committee about term limits, but I am interested. I am very curious to hear what, how people in, in the broad public would respond to this. If you haven't heard from anyone with me about term limits, Instance. Well, we, 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 we have. We've we heard from at least a couple of other people who are interested in our considered oh. yeah. yeah. And is the process that you will make recommendations and then the city council will vote on them? The council, the mayor, the state legislature, and for, for large issues like ranked choice voting or lowering the voting age, eventually it will be a referendum. In the city. A on every, all the changes will go well, to not, not every change is going to go to a referendum, but, but the, the voting age. age. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And term limits might. It's, it's up to the legislature. Yeah, I mean, uh, whatever the legislature decides to send it back to us, they may say put the whole menu on the on election. Okay. Right? okay. Which was the case of the, the last right. revision. The last charter with, with the the charter that we're currently working under was uh, presented to the public and then voted on. Right, right. Okay, I appreciate your listening to me. I mean, I did come in here to <laughs> unload on you, but I appreciate it. And I'm going to stay for the meeting because I'm really interested in what you're doing. So Good. Thank we you. can funnel more stuff through Dylan. He's our rep. Yes, sure sure can. can. Yes, Publicly available five days a week. You know where to find it. <laughs> Would you, uh, do you have anything you want to? I'm all set. Okay, great. Okay, um, do any committee members have uh, updates on any topics that aren't elsewhere on the agenda? I'm still waiting to hear from Bill Newman. Let me see if he mailed it to me now. He did have, he had, um, he called me today and said that he had specific language that wanted to recommend. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'm trying to get back on line here. Um, and, oh, still, still nothing. Um, he couldn't be here because he has a conflict. He has another meeting. Uh, he was going to ask Dennis Bidwell to represent him, but Dennis Bidwell's away. So he was calling me and um, I can describe the gist of it if you want, but we, that comes up as an agenda item, yeah. so, so why don't we save it for that? Yeah. So that's the next agenda. Is oh. Bill on this? Bill Newman? No. No. Oh. No. No. You, you see all the members except uh, Patty Healy represents okay. Ward no, I heard. Okay. 5 and, and uh, okay. Just uh, six. Six. Yeah. Ward 6, and Molly Fox represents Ward 7. Yeah. Anything yes. else? Yes, uh, one update. Um, for the next meeting, the mayor will be submitting three proposed charter suggestions for the committee to consider. One of them we've already discussed is the um, vac uh, vacancy in the office, or temporary vacancy. Mm -hmm. And the other two, um, one relates to elections, and I think one is regarding conflict of interest, but I could be wrong because we've talked about quite a few. There'll be three for the next meeting. Uh, okay. And, and I should note that we are now uh, approved by the council as special members, just so. Yes. So, uh, no. do you notification of that? Alan told us, I think, two meetings ago. Uh, oh. Bill Newman's just texted me. He said, check email in two minutes. Okay. So, <laughs> okay. Um, okay. Um, okay. Can you send it? Uh, okay. Second for what? Did you get caught up? I was just going to say. Oh, do I need a second? A do second. I need a, a few seconds. <laughs> <laughs>
Right. I'm just when the I, I'm familiar with the uh, the the uh, section about the mayor's absence from the city yep. that we've discussed before. You th what was the second one that you mentioned? Um, uh, I don't have the exact section yet because it may be a new proposal, mm -hmm. um, and I'm not exactly sure where it would be inserted in, but it was relating to um, extending voting um, in municipal elections to um, to uh, possibly green card holders or something of that nature, but okay. we're still working it out. Okay. And then the other one was relating um, something to do with um, not necessarily conflict of interest, but uh, extending the uh, definition of immediate family member or something like that. But again, we're still working out the language on that as well. But just, again, for just for the committee to consider and have a discussion about. Okay. Do, do you know if that's separate from um, the uh, the state law relative to conflict of interest and yes so this is strengthened are we going even further than the state law or um, it, it has to do with holding elected positions all right well, I look forward to that see what that is yeah okay so um, when those are um, defined and you'll, you'll set some yes, so they can be included on the agenda. Definitely. Put those on yep. the agenda for um, the June 18th meeting. Yep. Right? Yeah, we've been a little busy with um, budget stuff, so. But he did want me to uh, let you know that he had these three that we've been working on. And we'll have That's for great. you. Thanks. Thanks. Right. Just to say that I um, have, for a city clerk issue, uh, appointed versus elected, I've spoken with the city clerks in Amherst and East Hampton, mm -hmm. um, interesting conversations, and I have calls out to a few other playing phone tag with, I'm trying to talk to some appointed Jacob uh, okay. So we're, we're, we're actually going to discuss that um, yeah. later in the agenda, so yeah. okay. we'll, we'll get a full report from you. Well, I didn't know if you wanted that tonight or if you wanted to go along with We'll yes. Do in two weeks. Well, yes, we, uh, we're going to discuss what we're going to do. Yes, thanks. I appreciate it. I, I enjoy all that intelligence. Um, uh, we're going to discuss the format of the June 18th uh, meeting on the appointed versus elected city court. Okay. Um, all right, well, let, let's now move on to the, uh, the further discussion um, on. Possible addition of language to section 1-3, which is about division of power, clarifying the legislative power of the city council. This discussion stemmed from Bill Newman's presentation two meetings ago and our further discussion of it um, at the last meeting. And um, just for the record, Bill Newman uh, talked with me last week. Um, uh, primarily about other issues, but I told him that we had had a lengthy discussion. We were going to continue our discussion tonight and invited him to, to come, but he's been unable to. So, Bill, uh, Bill, you have some communication from him. He just, he, yes, I just got this email. This is his suggestion for the language change. Um, although, after some conversation that we had, he got a little mushier on it, but. Um, his suggestion is the city council shall have the power to enact all ordinances necessary and proper for carrying into execution powers vested by this charter in the government of the city. Um, it's a modification, as I understand, it's a modification of the, um, the federal definition of, of legislative powers and um, borrows somewhat from the Massachusetts Constitution. My discussion with him was similar to what we had here before, was to say, to, to say that we preface, the charter is preface that we, all these powers are established under um, uh, Mass General Law, and we refer to that in the charter. And I said, you know, it's, it's similar to saying all 
all uh, legislative personnel shall be Americans. It, it's presumed, a lot of it's all presumed. It's presumptive, it's already built in there. Um, because it doesn't say specifically that the council, the legislative branch um, drafts and creates ordinances, the fact that that's already listed and established under state law and it's presumptive. But, um, you know, so this would be somewhat redundant. It's not objectionable. It doesn't, it, it, it basically states what is already understood or should be understood. And if challenged, will be understood. Um, so, that said, you know, uh, the recommendation is as such could stand, and I have no problem with it. I just think once we start going there, we also have to do the same thing with the executive authority and possibly and do it with all the, all the other authorities that are already established under Mass General Law, which will expand the document somewhat. And if, if um, people feel that's necessary, then okay. I, I personally don't think it's necessary, but I'm obviously not the last word on this, so. Would you um, be sure to forward that language to Annie? Yeah, so here I'll do that one. She has that for the record. Um, are there any other, uh, any other thoughts that people have, have had in the last couple of weeks on this, this subject and you'd like to offer at this point? Bob. I've been thinking. Good. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of the thinking was done in response to Councillor Newman's letter to the newspaper. The, the column. Yeah. And, um, and now we have language. And I don't understand the language either. And more particularly, I don't understand the need for language. But since he's proposed it, it makes me wonder about the intent. Which is what I sort of um, was thinking about with regard to his, his column here. And what his column essentially does is use anecdotal evidence to support a hypothetical circumstance. Whereby he talks about something that might have happened and had it, what, what would be the case had this happened in an era when we don't have a competent mayor? So he's taking an anecdote and placing it on top of a, of a hypothetical as a way of trying to support the hypothetical. Now that's a valid thing to do and I certainly don't question his authority or, or ability to propose such a, such, such a line of reasoning. But I would say, upon thinking it over, that, you know, as, I, as I've mentioned, you know, I, I've had two 10-year stints in government, and I've had a lot of experience in, in Cambridge, in what all, and my experience runs quite counter to that suggested by, uh, by lawyer, lawyer Newman, and that's that it's entirely more likely that should such an anecdotal situation occur, it's going to be the legislative body that's, that is found to be weak rather than the executive. And there's many, many reasons to worry about that sort of circumstance, such as turnover. I mean, you, you we're coming into an era now where there's going to be a fairly radical turnover on our council. And in an era where so few people stand for election, the opportunity to vet the qualification of candidates is not what you would like it to be. And that's something that we've talked about, you know, as an attribute to rank choice voting. Hopefully we'll get more candidates to come out. And if you look at the public vetting of the councillor vis-a-vis the public vetting of the mayor, there's a much greater 
likelihood that the, that the mayor position is going to be filled by a qualified individual and the possibility that any X number of the legislative body might not be as experienced or as knowledgeable as you might like could be the case. So I would suggest that should some sort of situation test us, um, we really do need a strong executive in order to carry us through it. So, so his, his proposition here that we need to be attentive to the charter to strengthen the legislative body against potential failings of the executive body is not one that I support. I, I, don't, I really don't see that to be a current situation, nor do I see it as a potential likely situation in comparison to what he's suggesting in his, in his column here. So, if he's proposing language to us now, which really is, if not redundant, not necessary, I would have to say, why are we bothering ourselves with this? And, and, and if we are to be bothered by it, I would certainly want to know more about his intention in suggesting it. With your reasoning, do you feel a need to strengthen the executive branch? No. Okay. But, you know, unless... You've heard me ask several questions in that way, and the answer has always come back that it is contained in the administrative code. If any, you know, when I was attentive when all the department heads were here, and I've looked at it myself, and, and I don't see any deficiencies there, but if, but if anyone did see deficiencies in the administrative code, I think we should certainly, that's not our call, but attention should be paid to that. I have come. Bill. Um, my conversations with Bill actually were talking along that line, and we sort of came to a meeting of ideas in, in that respect. It's interesting because Bill's column, his scenario that he describes actually couldn't happen because he refers to the water, and he's talking about what happened in Flint. That actually, we have, the water is not does not come under our, the water period doesn't come under our authority, that's under the DEP and the, and the EPA. We, we actually have to abide by their terms and suffer the consequences if we do not. Um, the, the, rep the legislative body, the council, has, you know, actually to Bob's point, doesn't have the expertise or, or the authority to actually, to counter, and you can't embed that in the charter because <laughs> you would have a lot of uh, self-appointed experts um, running counter possibly to state and federal law. Um, and Bill, Bill allowed that maybe that was a bad choice of examples. He, he was, was going to try and conjure up something else, another worst case scenario. And the thing is, is that, I mean, part of the problem is if we're governed by worst case scenarios, um, we should functionally eliminate government in every way. And, and, and any human any human contribution to it whatsoever, because there are a myriad of worst case scenarios if it played out. But we would have, Bill's biggest concern was always the issue of checks and balances. I think that's where he starts from. And um, his initial reading of the charter, he felt that there wasn't checks and balances. I think as he stated, he said the legislative branch is essentially figureheads. They don't have any authority. They don't have any means by which they can um, run counter to a rogue mayor, I think, as he described it. And I think he's come to realize that that's not the case. Um, there actually is a fair amount of power invested in it. The original discussion, and hopefully uh, Bill Sherrill will be speaking about this the next meeting, but... Of this? Oh, uh, on this issue, among other issues, he's going to talk about the initial conversation, the original conversations and debates that occurred in the original drafting of the charter of the charter. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. yeah. I'll say yes, but I'm, I'm okay. sure that's a Tuesday. Good. So the reason for the, the
council with two terms, mayor with four terms. And the idea is that should a mayor run counter to the will of the people, that there's an opportunity to vote in councilors that they, uh, the people would feel would serve as a bulwark against that mayor, um, which is essentially what elections are, right? The, the, hopefully. I mean, to Claudia's point, it all relies on the, the uh, engagement of the, of the community and their participation and their willingness to actually participate in local government, which is the eternal frustration. But Bill's proposal with, you know, right now it's just kind of reduced beyond from what he was suggesting here and now to this kind of reductive statement and he seemed kind of mushy on that as well. But I don't want to overstate, I feel uncomfortable making his case for him because I don't agree with it. So that's not, that's, it's not, I'm not an appropriate representative of that viewpoint. So I suspect as he chooses over, we'll may have an opportunity to hear from him at the next meeting as this goes on. But you know, the one thing that I'm really grateful for, and this is what you know, Callan referred to, is the level of even as an academic study, his engagement, prompting engagement of other citizens also, thinking about these exercises and seeing what what you know what makes sense? Does it work? Is it defective? Is it broken? Is it dysfunctional? And the fact that many people don't even consider that. So the fact that Bill wrote this column, albeit somewhat logically flawed, um, it, it served its purpose, I think, in some respect. So, but anyway, so I'll leave it at that. I, I think that it, the um, any I hope this got forwarded to you. I can't for some reason, my mail's not working very well, but I didn't, if not, I'll, when I get home, I'll forward it to you. But, uh, All right, Bill, would you read that language one yeah, more time, please? Yeah, it's, um, the city council shall have, shall have power to enact all ordinances necessary and proper for carrying into executive, into execution powers vested by this charter in the government of the city. Does anyone want to uh, move that the, for discussion purposes, um, uh, uh, for further discussion, that we uh, consider that specific language? Okay. Not, with no motion, then uh, we will end the discussion for tonight. And uh, certainly, Bill Newman wants to return and uh, make his case. We'll. Thanks. It says it's sending, but I'm not optimistic. We'll see. Okay. <laughs> uh, our next item is um, to discuss and vote on a possible removal, on possibly removing the designation, quote, candidate for re-election, end quote, from the names of incumbents on municipal ballots. This is something that Sam has uh, proposed um, a couple of meetings ago. Do you want to speak to that, Sam? Um, there's a, um, a bill at the state level that was presented by Representative Mindy Dom um, with the same thing, and I had discussed it with her, and it's the idea of it is it could potentially remove one more barrier for people running for office. if. Running against an incumbent seems intimidating. That this could be one step towards helping people overcome that. Is the bill that's proposed now is that for state elections? Um, on primary and state ballots. Yes. This is uh, and, and where is this bill right now? It got referred to election laws. Last month. So it's in committee. Yeah. Okay. Which is where it will die. <laughs> <laughs> this is where it will be smothered to death. So do you know offhand like where somewhere in state law I'm assuming that says on our municipal ballot we have to print that language? I think so. I, I had asked Pam Powers this and um, 
I don't I don't know where it is in the in Mass General Law, but I I, I, I did a quick search after one of the meetings we yeah. talked about it, and I couldn't find it. And I but yeah, it's got to be there because there there's so many, but I just I couldn't find it in the time I spent looking. But I'd just be curious to see what it says. And from what I understood from my discussion with Pam was that, like, it, like she is, it's on our ballot because of the state. So I could, I could look more into it and find it exactly where it is. Um, so I think for discussion purposes, we should have a motion to. Oh, I'm on the floor. Oh, okay. Second. Okay. So it's not addressed. Right now, specifically in the charter, it's simply a state, mm -hmm. so apparently a state statute that we can agree upon. Does anyone else see the irony that in this era of running against an incumbent can be an attribute? Totally. Yeah. I mean, it can go either way. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I think, actually, I have no objection to this, but I. My only concern is that it's, it's one of those things that probably doesn't reach the threshold of charter involvement um, because it has more to do with somehow directing the clerk to do something that may run counter to policy by the set by the attorney uh, by the attorney general or the uh, secretary Galvin, for instance. But the, if she can actually, if the city clerk can set a policy, um, and the city clerk is autonomous in this respect, could set, establish a policy that says that they will just merely be listed as candidates for office. I think that would actually address the problem. But, and Pam, no one, I, I fully trust Pam to do exhaustive research in figuring this out and determining if that's something that is worth doing. I, I, I actually always thought it was a little bizarre when I would see that. I thought that that, that conferred an automatic advantage. Just in the, it, it also presumes uh, an ignorance of the voting public because the they're going there and they're looking and if they're picking a name at the point, the, maybe they saw a sign on the way into the polls, but if they're going in and they haven't even decided on a candidate and they decide to go with the one who is already there, it's that's sad, but that can very likely be the case. So I, I, had, I, but I don't think I don't think this, as I said, reaches the threshold of charter embed, being a charter embed. Um, well, Dylan, um, I just found a reference to one Massachusetts being the only state in the country that requires a incumbents being listed first, and I don't know if that's still the case. Yeah. Um, and B naming the incumbent, and does have a reference to the actual it's statute. It's the only state. Yeah, General Laws, Part 1, Title 8, Chapter 54, Section 41, and then it's a huge long passage, which I can't even find it in. Okay. Right. So it's there. Eight, <laughs> sorry, Title 8, what chapter? Chapter 54, Section 41. Thank you. Names, residences, political designation, incumbents. So, so it doesn't answer whether well, it's really a charter business. Yeah, yeah, I don't think Pam could, if, if it is actually in the Mass General Law, Pam can't change that. Okay, right. this mm -hmm. is for state elections. That requires incumbents to be listed first on the ballot and have the designation candidate for re-election. In, in, North, in Northampton, in municipal elections, the candidate's position on the ballot is determined by drawing. Is that for the preliminary? That's that, is, that is for, no, that's the uh, election procedure. Uh, the ballot position, the order in which the candidates reach out to secure on the ballot should be determined by drawing by lot conducted by the city clerk. 8 4 ballot position radio city election. The order shall be determined by a drawing by lot conducted by the city clerk. So it's both preliminary and regular city election. So in that, in that instance, then, Municipal procedure differs from the state. Right, so here's the language. To the name of a candidate for a state or city office who is an elected incumbent, thereof, there shall be added in the same space the words candidate for re election, except in the case of political party candidates for the offices of governor and lieutenant governor. This is uh, the same section you're reading from, mm -hmm. and that, that applies to state and city. 
you know, correct? Yes, I do. Okay. So I think that's the answer. That this is the state law that, that unlike the position on the ballot, that uh, Northampton has adopted its own procedure, that Northampton could not uh, change that designation. For municipal elections. Well, it's, it, it, yeah. it refers to, to state yeah. and city candidates, right? Unless we request. Re requested. Well, yes. I mean, we could, I suppose we could ask the state legislature to. Well, I mean, we're, ask, we're recommending a 16-year-old vote, which the state law says 16-year-olds can't vote. Can't right? ask. I, I, I just mean like I don't understand why it can't be. Well, we could, we could. Yeah. Uh, it's not something right now that is up to the city clerk to, to determine. Correct. I mean, so wouldn't it have to go yes. in? It yes. would have to be in the charter if we wanted to change it. Yes. Yes. We probably need Alan for some of this. Yeah. So that we yeah. can actually read that full chapter right. and he can And make sure it's the current it. one. I mean, yeah. it's on the Mass Legislature website. <laughs> Who knows? I just Googled it in two minutes. I think it's worth more discussion. I, mean, yeah. I, I like the idea, of, and I like the idea of, of recommending it, even though it's state statute. Yeah, it's, 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 it's curious to me about the, um, the positioning on the ballot only applies to yeah. state elections. There's no mention of municipal elections in the state statute. So that seems easier then for a city to to deal with itself, whereas the candidate for the election is set forth in the state statute. But why don't we, Sam, why don't we, um, uh, why don't we make sure that that is the current state statute? And, um, and uh, when Alan returns, why don't we discuss it further? Okay. Uh, then I guess we'll, uh, we should have a motion to table this for further research and to resume discussion. So moved. Second. Perhaps the next Okay. All those in favor of table? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any questions? Yes. Yes. Okay, so now um, we, had, uh, we had talked last meeting about inviting um, some specific uh, people with um, knowledge or experience with city clerk position, uh, appointed or elected to come and address us at the June 18th meeting about the virtues of appointed city clerk versus an elected city clerk. So, Rob, your, your progress on that. Well, I've, I've spoken with two. Do you want me to wait and present all of the information in two weeks? No, that no, I've no, gathered? no. Tell us what you okay. what you've determined at this point. All right. So I spoke with uh, Barbara Lombard in East Hampton. She's appointed. Uh, she has served as both elected and appointed. Mm -hmm. um, looks like they switched to being. They were elected. It was an elected position through 1996 in East Hampton. It's been appointed since then. Um, she does not see much of a difference. Uh, she is appointed by the city council as opposed to the mayor, and this makes sense to her. Um, she also serves, though, as the clerk to the city council. Um, but she, that was the most important point for her to make, was that she was appointed by city council and not the mayor. She liked the idea of uh, someone else having appointing authority. Um, she said that the clerk in East Hampton has always been part of, this was her quote, the pay plan, never just out there or actually feeling different. So she must, I asked her to explain that, but she didn't really, that she um, feels like a part of the executive branch. Does that make sense? Um, she say that again? She liked that she was part of the pay plan? It's always been part of the pay plan. She never felt like she was out there separately. Um, this is her quote, she never actually felt. So that probably means her salary is not set by ordinance, mm -hmm. or that she's probably treated like a city employee for pay, yeah. I guess? Yeah. Um, she knows some clerks who still like having um, the voters be the boss, 
um, but she and she's she's never had any problems with elections uh, when she was involved. State says the clerk can still run the ballot. Um, if they're opposed, it can be tricky. She's never encountered that. Um, she said it would be useful to be able to step aside for certain parts of the election process in that case. Um, and then I also spoke with uh, from Amherst. Can, can I just ask again, yes. why, why is she why does she feel it's so important that she's appointed by the city council as opposed to the mayor? Um, all I can tell you is, and, and, and I asked her to, to expound, um, is she said it makes sense to her. She likes someone else having the appointing authority. It spreads it around. It was, um, I remember actually the debate that they were having about this, and then there was some discussion actually locally about this. Um, you know, the biggest concern is there's an embedded conflict regardless. There is who do you answer to and thereby exists a conflict, right? Um, if you answer to the voters, you have a conflict insofar as you're running the election that you are, right. that you, you are part of, whether you're opposed or not. Yeah. Then there's the other conflict of if you're appointed by the mayor, do you, uh, are you, do you serve at the mayor's pleasure and thereby have um, an obligation to abide by that. And this is always the argument about why, whether you should have an elected or not, because the, if you come under the auspices of the mayor, one of the offsets was proposed to have a council appointment, um, thereby, as Robbie said, sort of spreading out the responsibility and obligation. But it also, the appointment is always vulnerable in uh, in one sense, that they're not protected completely from, for instance, being dismissed. Um, so it's, this has been, you know, over 350 years of Massachusetts governance, they still haven't figured out the best way to do this. They have not, they can't, and when you contact the AG's office, they rarely return your calls because they're so frustrated with this. And it's different for towns than it is for cities, which I think is also what Dylan was referring to on the, in the previous discussion. They only mention cities and state. They don't talk about town elections and town government. They have actually more flexibility. There's the less likelihood of a conflict and there's more wiggle room for uh, 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 an elected clerk in that respect. Not so much for a city. They actually still haven't figured that one out either. So what we're left with is trying to come up with the best case scenario. And again, once again, this goes to what Bill Newman was saying. You know, what's the worst case scenario that could happen? You have a rogue mayor who appoints a clerk who gets in conflict or wants to somehow <coughs> jerry rig or, or uh, tilt the election in their favor, they can threaten the clerk with such and such. It's pretty far-fetched because there's so much oversight and monitoring control. And, but yeah, I suppose that's possible. It is possible because we're talking about personalities and people and things like that and how they can be influenced. So that's, that's why that East Hampton decided that the best way at that point, they had this debate and they felt that the best way was to um, spread the wealth or the culpability. Did she have, um, <clears throat> or did, did she have a, did she express a strong preference to you? Um, no. no, and she was a little reluctant. She was, maybe slightly uncomfortable, so um, wasn't all that forthcoming, very pleasant. But um, she kind of said she didn't see a real difference to start out with. So. Well, all I can say is when, when I visited our neighbors on the night that they voted on the what sort of ranked choice voting propositions they wanted to move forward, it was very clear that a strong attribute of support was the nastiness of the mayor, mayoral races. I mean, that came up more than once. Now, it could just be in the context of a, 
of a recent history of difficulties in electing mayors that she didn't want to have anything to do with, with that. Mm -hmm. um, and I have to say, you know, on the heels of, of what Bill was saying, I mean, I've seen more rogue, I, the opportunity for rogue counselors to right. affect, think of it. You know, you come in and you're, you're, it's always difficult when you're, when you're mindful of more than one boss, but if you've got, if you've got seven of them or nine of them, you know, it doesn't, it takes a, it takes a, a grouping of three, four, five of them to really cause havoc. And, and if those three, four, five, well, that's all I'm saying. I mean, that, that, that has a far greater incidence of disruption than a, than a bad executive. I've seen that happen more than what I've seen that happen. Okay. And also um, in Amherst, Margaret Nardowitz. Um, she wanted to stress that the duties, regardless of the size of the community, are fast becoming more complex. And unless you have a qualified individual familiar with state statute, being elected doesn't make sense any longer. Um, especially in a hospital community like Northampton, and I meant to go back to her and ask her more about that, and I didn't, so I can call her back, because I couldn't, maybe you can speak to why that, she would have said that, hospital, hospital, hospital community. So what happens is, hospitable. Birth, the, <laughs> we record all the births for the entire, anybody that has a baby. Uh, okay. So oh, if you have a hospital, nice. or a death, or, Got it. there's a uh, lot more yeah. records yeah. All right. in okay. a hospital community, or communities that have nursing homes and yeah. assisted living facilities. And yeah. So we, the clerk's office here handles a lot more than a lot of the surrounding city or town Thank you. offices. So that's what she must have been referring to. Mm -hmm. uh, she said some, some may feel fine to have the post elected, but for her, it's about ensuring qualified individuals. Yeah. Abby, can you send me, pardon, can you send me the stuff yes. that you're reading? Yeah. Okay, thanks for that. Um, so I'm waiting on a few more, and I'm trying to get some elected. Thank you. Okay. Um, we had talked uh, about inviting um, specifically the, the previous three city clerks mm -hmm. uh, uh, to come and address us, and give them the opportunity to come and address us. Um, and we'd also, uh, we had, uh, Pam had talked about uh, someone from the, the Massachusetts, did we, did we determine any, is it the Massachusetts? Uh, there were three that she, uh, oh, I think it was the Municipal yeah. Clerks Association, wasn't it? It was the State Clerks Association, the Massachusetts the Municipal, I have a question mark, and then the Municipal Clerks Association. Well, I, Massachusetts Municipal is probably the MMA, Massachusetts mm -hmm. Municipal Association. Yeah, state and mm -hmm. state. But clerks. the Massachusetts City Clerks Association, the Massachusetts Town Clerks Association, and the New England City and Town Clerks Association. Okay, so there's both a City Clerks and a Town Clerks Association in Massachusetts? That's what she said. She said the City Clerk one doesn't have a website. Mm -hmm. They're pretty parties, so though. They're crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Nuts. <laughs> um, have, have you talked with, with Pam about having any of those groups represented? I have not, but okay. I, I will. Okay. Can to do that? Yes, because I I think she I, mean, I think she was trying to get to see if we should, if she could get someone here from at least one of those groups. Yeah, that's what Alan had said. He asked her to do that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll check in with her. Uh, all right. Do we want to have the the three previous? Do we want to give them the opportunity, give them an invitation to come and address us? Three pre previous city clerks. Right. Sure. Okay. Can you um, uh, work with Lynn to um, mm -hmm. to email them? And is that is that the appropriate way of inviting them? Um, I don't know if I well. The city clerk's office may have the most current contact information for them, but okay. I am happy to work with you to try to find that. Um, either if... Um, 
I'm thinking the phone call yes. is probably easiest because I don't yes. know if we would have we may, current we may, emails. Yes, we may have to resort to the telephone. <laughs> um, and if you, Robbie, if, if you want me to make the call, um, make those calls, I'd be happy to do that. So, um, uh, why don't you... Uh, yeah, why don't you go ahead and do that? Yeah, why don't, Lane, if you want to, can you get me the yeah. phone numbers for, uh, we're talking about uh, Christine Skorowski, uh, we're talking about uh, yeah. Wendy Mazza yeah. and Adeline Murray, mm -hmm. and I'd be happy to give them a call mm -hmm. and invite them to come to the June 18th meeting. Um, I know it was, um, it was quite controversial at the last revision, right? No. It was actually um, Clerk Mazza in particular was opposed to it. Um, from what I understand, she's had a change of mind, but that could have changed again. But she uh, she had represented to some people that she was not adverse to, uh, <laughs> after leaving the clerk's position, that she was not adverse to uh, mm -hmm. having it become an appointed position. But um, we should hear that directly from her if she's, if she's willing to come and speak to that. Are, are there others, um, other people you think we should in, invite? Um, I'm trying to, actually, you know, it would be helpful if we ask um, Bill Sher when he comes in, because he'll, he can relate what the, what the push me, pull you part of it was. The, um, I wasn't present at those meetings, so I, I feel a little uncomfortable describing it. I only heard it third and second hand, mm -hmm. so. Um, yeah, for those of you who aren't aware, we, um, Bill Dwight has suggested that Bill Scher, who was a member of that uh, committee, the review committee, back in 2012, um, would be a good resource for us to hear from. So he's agreed to come conveniently enough at the June 18th meeting. Should we maybe uh, ask him to refresh his, that we may want to know about that as well? Or does he already know that we'll yeah. ask him about that? He, he, yes, and he's prepared to discuss basically all the controversial points. Can you um, just things mean, about issues like ranked choice voting, that yeah. came up and that was actually uh, at the last minute was eliminated. The thing about the appointed clerk came up. Um, actually, almost every time, with, with the exception of like the 16-year-old vote, which wasn't discussed at that. But um, for, for the most part, many of the things, uh, term limits, in fact, actually. Um, among other things. So I, I think he could actually, I think part of it would be helpful just so that we know what would form and shape the debate mm -hmm. leading into it and what the thought processes was of the participants. Yeah. And Bill's a good reporter on that because that was his job, was to actually report back on what, and I think he drafted the final um, report and, and opinions, so. Great. Good. That's great. So that that's that that is serendipitous. That that is all happening on June 18th. Should we use the the email list of city um, officials, municipal officials that we did back in March, for when we asked them to come and address us or invited them to come to address us about anything? Should we use that again? Do you think there's sufficient interest among municipal Officials to let yes, them know. Officials, the public. I mean, I think it'd be Especially before yeah. the slowdown of the summer, that might be yeah. a good time. Sure. Okay. Yeah. So, can you can you do that part of it, Lynn? Yeah. Just um, use that same email list to let municipal officials know that on our June 18th agenda is a discussion of appointed versus elected city clerk and any who can have. Anything they want to weigh in on or invited to the town. I will take care of inviting the, the three former city clerks as soon as I get their phone numbers. And Robbie, if you work with PM on a representative from one any of these state groups. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, and, and you may have some additional um, reporting should. done from other clerks. Yeah, it's okay. been phone tag, so I should. Yeah. Yeah. Do we want to consider a different venue? Or do you think this is adequate? Well, given the lack of uh, <laughs> turnout at that March meeting, um, I'm okay with this venue unless you know, unless we hear that you know a lot of people are planning to come. 
I, I, mean, I think probably don't need JFK, but the city no, council okay. chambers would be an alternative. That's what I was thinking, just because sometimes it's awkward when yeah. people are trying to talk to us and meet. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm happy to to um, you want to see if the city council chambers are available. Sure, I can schedule that. And okay. We can go from there. Sure. Okay. That'd be great. All right. Anything else, uh, Robbie, that you want to say about mm -hmm. this? Any other thoughts from other committee members? I need to see on the city clerk issue. So it, would you just let me know when, when you confirm the city council chambers are available and that we're scheduled to meet there so that I can tell um, the three four city clerks that that's what will be for us. Okay, the, the last item on the agenda is, is more discussion on outreach to underrepresented communities. Uh, I did uh, have a communication with Molly about this. Uh, she had an unavoidable work conflict um, tonight. And uh, she has a particular interest in, in this issue and has some thoughts. Um, she asked me if we could have our discussion on, on June 18th. So uh, I'm happy to hear if anybody's uh, thought about this uh, you know, the last couple of weeks and want to you know, put anything out there that we should think about. That's fine. But uh, in terms of making a kind of a, a specific uh, plan um, I think we'll wait until the June 18th. All right. Anything else? Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any extensions? Thank you.